You like 20? Yeah, that sounds great. Thank okay. you. I'll take it. I yeah. love her. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Well, here we are on the appropriately signed slow approach to the Columbia River Bridge joining Washington and Oregon. Expo Center, a place I wasn't sure I was going to get to see again, so this is great. Hey, it's George the Antique Nomad. I am in front of my booth at the new Rose City Vintage Market. We opened yesterday. It was so busy. It was just great. It was so great to see familiar people from the old days and a bunch of new people who were discovering it for the first time. Uh, we had viewers come, the sales were fantastic. I'm going to film what's left of my booth. I've had a really busy show and you're seeing it minus about $5,000 in merchandise, but I still have some cool things. These just came to me and these are Sasha Brostoff and a lot of people haven't seen this pattern. They're more familiar with some of the other little pieces that I'll show you soon of his. It's such a great all over floral pattern and this is first factory because it's got his signature but it doesn't have the rooster. So this is earlier than you would think. This is likely to be early 1950s even though it looks late 1960s. So those are great pieces. I got several pieces of Blanco. You see the ruby red, the amberina. There's a green one back there. And I've got some blue and some other colors up here. And this really great vase here with the super cool handles is Blanco. These viewers were having a fun mother and daughter shopping day and bought the butterflies. These are all Hakata dolls. A lot were done by Arnault. You'll see some of the familiar Japanese labels. They're very light porcelain but painted and they were all to represent traditional Japanese ways of living that were passing in the 1960s. And then I've got a whole table of ephemera, the Portland Trailblazers program from back when they played the Sonics years ago and railroad stuff, and then a bunch of Matryoshka dolls. I just came across a big collection. A gal had collected for years, was published in articles and newspapers, and I got a little bit of her collection. 
And then we spin around here, and I had a lot of other fancy boudoir items. Again, sales have been very brisk. I do still have the mice in box. I also have the cut 1870s paper silhouettes. The amber box there is Val Saint Lambert from Belgium. They made a lot of really good glass that people overlook in the marketplace in America, but it's well known in Europe. And then here is a Limoges ceramic bisque fairy lamp with Mona Lisa, and it's just thin enough that the candlelight makes the scenes light up like lithophane. It's a very pretty piece. I just got here because yeah. yeah, I opened eight, yes. and I found some jewelry already. Oh, awesome. I had to show off with Stephanie a little bit because I just bought these Juliana bracelets at the show this morning as well, and I only paid about 25 to 30 a piece for them. They should sell for 65 to 75 to the right people, so that was a good buy. This is Hi. Stephanie. This is Stephanie from Thrifting Adventures. She lives in Vancouver and okay. she does a uh, thrift vlog. I'll show you a little more of my booth while they get to know each other, including the Henry Broderick hard hat. He was instrumental in building the Space Needle. And it's fake. I'm it's yelling through the screen. Fake, and no, exactly. But they're starting to learn too, and that's part of. That's good. You know, and honestly, that's the other reason I wanted to do this is because I thought I see all these new people getting involved, right. and I want them to understand what they're seeing. I know that's so awesome. that they're representing it right for themselves and for everybody else. I mean, not. That's what's so awesome about you, you're like a teacher. And Knowledge is power. So since the furniture I had all the Native American baskets on sold, I use various chests to stack. Here's a neat cigar band, little picture in a frame from about 1900. Seed pods from the Southwest. Now over here, these shapes in these pictures, when you see them, even if they're not marked, that shape is Vernon Kilns of California, and it's such a wonderful deco shape. That's the Hawaiian coral pattern. And down here, this looks like Van Briggle, but it's actually Weller. And I really am happy with the Vienna art tray I bought earlier today. I will show you the back a little more clearly. This is a beer advertisement from Portland, so it makes it double collectible. And I also bought this. This is a strawberry carnival glass bowl from about 1910. And a whole bunch of Victorian ribbon. This is the only chance I'm going to have to go around and film. So I'm filming Saturday morning as quickly as I can before we get busy and I have to go back to work. So this is Expo Hall E. And we're so glad that she took Hall E because the lighting's better in here. Things really show well in here. I'd say there's 125 to 150 dealers in here. And there's everything from jewelry to oriental rugs to art deco. My friend Andrea here is already showing Bakelite. She has such wonderful things. Oh, and look, the customer has some wonderful things too. But she also does a lot of really neat deco. Look at this Hager in the pink and blue. This is a piece you just rarely see. This is really fun. This is after the deco era. Yes, it is indeed German, Karlsruhe. That's a really great design. I haven't seen much by them before. And then just look at the Bakelite. So many beautiful carved pieces. Isn't that great? It's, um... Pieces with amazing carving pieces with lots of color pieces with designs and items included. You can see the flowers in that one in the back there. And a ton of great shapes. The crab I've never seen before. That's a really fun thing. These fruit clusters are quite lovely. And of course, it was very popular. My grandmother had the cherries. Sometimes they'd be held by hand. Sometimes they'd be attached to hearts. Sometimes it'd just be a cluster of cherries. And then she's even got the really great little lighter shape like the dice. She just gets the neatest stuff. This fellow is shown here for years. He's got everything from signs to stife. A wonderful selection of items. And then there is going to be some vintage, like hats and clothing and things, because this is a vintage show. And then over here, we have a familiar name, which is Left Coast Revivals. And there she is now. Good morning, Laura. Good morning. 
<laughs> how are you? I'm tired, how are you? Oh, uh, exhausted. Oh my gosh, I didn't expect to be so busy yesterday. And I'm glad I'm here now that I'm here, but the getting here was really rough. <laughs> I woke up and at least I felt rested. But yes. Like 20 minutes into getting here this morning, I'm like, I'm tired again. I know, exactly, <laughs> yes. And I'm so sorry you dragged this all the way here for me and I didn't oh, end up you know using what? it. I'm actually gonna use it today for my squash. Oh, potatoes. good. No problem at all. Perfect, good. Oh, good, you need it because it looks like you've sold a ton of stuff. Yeah, she's Courtney over here. This is Courtney with Once Again Vintage. Once Again Vintage. Hi, Courtney. Nice, nice to see you. Nice to see you. This is George. Hi, George. Hello. She's probably heard a lot about you. Yesterday, when people stopped by this space, they kept talking about, George is here. Oh, gosh. I know. It's Well, and vice versa. It was so cool. Yeah, I, I wish we were doing shows together all the time. <laughs> it's so really fun. But Courtney sold almost all of her furniture yesterday. I was blown away because, I mean, you had six or eight really nice designer yeah. pieces that were so so you must have priced them right because they uh, but it was so busy oh that's so great now they do still have the milo bauman which are favorites of mine personally i love these looped chrome pieces and i've had them a couple of times before too and um, oh they look good even with food on it don't worry <laughs> yep so this here's how you can follow them if you're not already you should because uh, laura has a great channel she's really good with putting things together and courtney is just like become her partner and protege with it and look at this that she's bringing out that's really nice did that come from the estate yesterday no i've actually had this for a couple of years really and i don't want to sell it but i uh... i know it's really cool though i love the head i mean it's it's like a deer but figural it's just really neat and there's been a big debate on youtube some people thought it i thought it originally was a wolf a wolf and then some people thought it was a, a mandrel like a mutton Oh, well, I could see that, but I swear those are supposed to be antlers, aren't they? I see antlers, too. Yeah. I see it. Well, what do you guys think on YouTube? Yeah, leave a comment. Tell us what you think this critter is. I'm going to turn it this way. Yeah, here we go. Yes. Yes, leave a, leave a comment as to what you think this critter is, and then uh, Laura can tag it properly. There we go. <laughs> and I love this. I know this is a woman's. If you had a man's version of this, I would buy this and wear it until I died. Isn't it amazing? It's so cool. Is it vintage? It's So this is actually technically vintage by Etsy standards. Right. The 90s redoing the 70s. Okay. So it's not an authentic 1970s one. Yeah, I didn't think so, but it sure has the look, and it's good. The color. That's why I picked it up. So the I color's so great. I got this in Dallas, Texas. Really? Yeah. Gosh. I'll, I'll I thought I traveled a lot. You go everywhere. I'm trying. <laughs> I missed out for a couple of years, so I've got some making up to do. Yeah, that's right. Oh, it's so cool. Well, this is so much fun, and your booth just looks great, and I'm not surprised you're doing really well. Look, there's no furniture to put the stuff on. Isn't that amazing? There was. <laughs> And look at this great thing. I understand that her dad made this, and sure, it just seems elemental, but look what it does for the booth. It gives elevation, and it makes it look like you're in a room. I mean, I just think the way they've done this is so cool. And I was with her when she got these uh, canisters. These came from the Ohio show last week. So anyway, so that's a familiar face that uh, I am really enjoying having at the show. But there's so much good stuff, and there's a lot of people here who are familiar to me because I've done the show for a long time, so I'm going to go around and see what else I can show you while we have the chance. There's also some dealers I don't know because she did bring up um, some from California and some new dealers in the Portland area came to do this as well. These are really fun, these modern with the rope seats. And a live edge table. A Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, because everyone needs that. And then look at this. I really like this. I like anything that's folk and just sort of made of leftover, broken, and found parts. And they've taken this, what looks like a truly vintage, or antique maybe even, plant stand. And somebody has had the best time using broken pieces of china and glass and little doodads, things that they found, a couple of buttons, and turned it into this really great folk art piece. That would be a really fun thing as a plant stand in room or even a newel post on a staircase. This is Corey PDX and Dive Studio. Now I have to say there's a lot of social media people here. Um, people who are on social media besides just YouTubers. So if you check out Instagram and some of those things, I think you're gonna find some of these people. Oh, they only have 30 on that decanter. 
Hey everyone, I just wanted to take a quick break and thank you for watching this video. If you're enjoying it, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Also, please do subscribe because then you can click that bell to be notified of future videos. We have membership packages. There's a couple of different levels. We appreciate the support of our super fans who help us do extra bonus content. You can check that out by hitting the join button below or clicking the link in the description. And lastly, we want to ask you to check out our new channel, The Antique Nomad Live, that's live with an exclamation point, where we're doing additional content of a live nature, haul sales, bonus stuff. We'll have a lot of fun there too. So check us out here on The Antique Nomad and also on The Antique Nomad Live. Now let's get back to this video. This is a great place that would make you think this is almost glass, but it isn't, it is ceramic. The Zenith clock is neat. Yeah, you as always have really amazing stuff. And I just wanted to show some of it because uh, this is the only chance I'm going to get to film for my blog today. I mean, it'll... There's a lot of neat jewelry here. And these pieces from India are interesting because they're a combination of turquoise and coral. I like the way they're set. It's almost like cosmic. You can see the little wires. We also have a really sweet portrait pin up here. This guy's got the posters. He has been doing this for a long time, and boy, he's got cool stuff. He's got James Bond. He's got Godzilla. He's got a bunch of foreign ones of Frankenstein and Godzilla versus Mothra. Oh, that's a classic. I agree. I do think this show has a cool vibe. You were busy. I was busy. So that seems like a I, good, I've heard a couple of I've heard a couple of other people say they were really happy. Todd so said he's ecstatically happy about it all. Good, that's so, great to hear. These are the things we need to hear, Hendrix, because there's a guitar also. Oh, that makes sense. Yes. I, I saw the hair, and I just went, "Oh, it's got to be Jim Morrison." But then my son pointed out happy. the guitar. Yep, that's Hendrix. Yep, yeah. and it's a Peter Zero. And then this one is Dan Shoop. These early psychedelic pieces are absolutely collectible now and starting to go for big money. You can see a few hundred dollars each. Here's a nice step tonsu. This one I believe is Japanese. They were made in Korea as well. In small houses in Japan, this doubles as a staircase or a way to get up to higher places or a sleeping loft, but it's also a great piece of furniture. So that's a neat thing to see. We see these more on the West Coast. We're seeing a lot more interest in these wooden radios from the 60s now because they get FM as well as AM. And then these women are all Hager in the brown and avocado glazes, men and women. Where is that Santa going? Follow that Santa. He's going past a table of really cool Tonka toys. You can really find a lot of variety at this show, which is good to see. I, this is the first time I've gotten out and I wasn't sure what the variety would be. Being that it's a vintage show, you can find everything from collector pins to Halloween masks to Hummel figurines. Down here are a couple of neat things we see in this part of the country. These are ethnographic masks, and they can really be valuable depending on the artist. I mean, these things typically are not inexpensive new. This one's priced at $125. You notice it has a crack here. Sometimes they don't let the wood cure enough, and that can be a problem. So you really need to look at masks. A lot of these were done 30 years ago. They're old enough now that if they're going to age badly, you're starting to see it. This one is intact, though, and this one's also $125. I suspect compared to what it was knew that that's probably a pretty reasonable price if you're a collector and these are just starting to make their way out into the marketplace it seems. We see these a lot from the Netherlands. Soda Zanden Zeep. Here's something that's becoming more and more popular. You see the blue butterflies in the background. A lot of this was made in Brazil where they have a lot of the blue butterflies, although they have them throughout Central America. It's $32 for that tray. The Brazilian map is not as interesting to a lot of our collectors here. If it had any other motif, that would definitely be more than $32. 
an old Knights of Pythias, that's another fraternal organization. This appears to be 1860s or 70s, the belt with all the detailing, and it's $50. Wonderful Victorian wicker buggy with the parasol is priced at $195. They're really not expensive for what they are. This is a neat old seed box. We see a lot of seed boxes out there. It's something people tended to keep because they'd use them year to, to year. This one's priced at $2.95. This lithograph is probably going to date it to about 1900. And then we have Dr. Price's food, which is nature's food for man. And look, Columbia is serving it at breakfast to Uncle Sam and a young woman, so apparently it's nature's food for women as well. The only wheat flake celery food. Ooh, that sounds like an, an interesting combination. I can see why it's the only one. This is nice because you can tell it's original. A lot of the perfume companies would frame in something for store display where it would have the name on the frame as well. So if you see these old perfume advertisements, look to see if there is the signature on the frame to match the piece because they generally should have that. This could use restoration, but this is really cool. It's Wings King Size Cigarettes. Wings of Destiny on the NBC radio network every Friday night was what Wings Cigarettes was the sponsor advertising. And then here's a really cool piece. This was made in St. Louis. This is a quick meal and so it actually had some things that were supposed to help speed up the cooking process, part of which was being tall and narrow so that the heat would really furnace up through the whole thing. So it's a little bit more unusual. Pearson's Pigeon Haven, that's just a really fun graphic. Massachusetts, you wonder how things get where they get. And then here's a fine old scale. This is a Dayton scale, a store scale from about 1900. You can tell that it's that era, partly because it's the nice blue color, partly because it's got this great cartouche. This is only $2.95. I have sold lesser scales for greater prices. That's actually very nice. Lots of neon. Lots of die cast and a lot of pop culture stuff, a bunch of stuff from Toy Story and Pokemon. So again, it's a vintage market. You can kind of find a lot of different things here. You can find more modern collectibles, which is cool. It means that we're getting some younger people in here. You know, here's Star Wars Episode One, And there's a blast from the past, the Dancing Clintons. <laughs> Need to see the original Donald Duck Fisher price. That's $250, but they are absolutely hard to find. In fact, they have a lot of neat vehicles in here as well. The Marks, the big car from the 1930s at $595. Some of this is really hard to find. There's Old School Kroger, $225. And here's the Marks gas station for $395, the roadside rest, and it has everything. It's got the car. It's got the lift, it's got the oil and the gas pumps and the free air and everything is there. Remember free air? And then this is neat because it's got all the bottles, so they've really got good stuff. It's a very nice display. And you can see some of these big old, like the Buddy L Tanker, $14.95. I've sold pieces in that price range. If you get someone who's really hot for one of these and it's in good shape, they will pay the money. Look at this old fire pump, early semi-truck from the 30s when that started to be a thing. And you can tell it's a Mack Bulldog because it's even got the original hood ornament. Those are almost always missing. These folks have a whole shelf of Nimaji pottery. I've always liked the way that they would uh, dye the clay and then it has a feeling of being wheel thrown. That's an early piece because it doesn't have the logo. That's an, actually, both of those are early pieces. Let's see, this may be a little later. There we go. That's the logo you see a little more often. Paul's Aladdin teapot. That's a great shape. And this is a lot of real Jadeite Fire King from the 50s, not the Martha Stewart reproductions. And then Delphite as well, which is also very collectible. 
Here's a great space full of interesting stuff. And look at the condition. When you see these, you see them sat on, squashed, dented, beaten. You don't see them in that condition. That's really amazingly clean. The fair's beer is practically immaculate. This really is what you want if you're uh, collecting or buying and selling advertising. I've heard it often said that it is better to spend the money and get one really nice thing than be in a hurry and try to decorate a whole house with it fast because you will get better things you'll want to hold on to. And with the prices of advertising having gone up quite a bit, I mean like the squirt uh, chalkboard there is 285 it makes sense to buy what's really good. We're seeing a lot of blow mold. That's a really neat set there with the wise men. Now here's a bunch of marine ivory and people are constantly being confused thinking that because it says it's ivory that you can't sell it. There are some preclusions on what you can sell from Alaska, but it's not so much about the material, it's about the origin and making sure that you're not selling something that's a true native artifact. But these pieces are legal to sell and desirable. The desk set with the little, I believe it's a puffin on it, is 75. You get these little cash boxes with the seals. The bracelets, the jewelry are very popular. 165 for the one scrimshot with the wool and then lots of letter openers. Look how fun the Skookum sign is too. They've got all seven letters. Skookum was part of the advertising for the apples in the Yakima Valley, and that's when the Skookum dolls started to be made. They originally had dried apple heads. We're getting to that time of year where it's worth showing this. This is Franciscan's October. This is similar to the Desert Rose and the Apple in that it's embossed and hand-painted, but October wasn't done as long. It was done in the late 70s, and people really like that color scheme now. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at the Antique Nomad. Bye for now!